If you have an interest in running OpenSense on Proxmox, this video is going to be for you. I'm going to walk through how to install it and walk through some of the networking options. Uh, I don't generally recommend that you run a virtualized firewall. It can just cause you a lot more headache when it comes to troubleshooting things. It's just many people do. It's just not something I believe in doing. I'm doing it in this case so that I can, um, it just makes more sense for me to have it on Proxmox while I'm doing some of the videos that I have planned. So let's dive straight in. First things first, we're going to need to uh, download the OpenSense ISO. So head across to OpenSense and grab that. Uh, so you want AMD64, uh, we need to change this to DVD because we want the ISO, not the uh, USB image. So we can go ahead and download that. Uh, just quickly while this is downloading, you'll notice the file extension is .iso.bz2, um, which means it's a bzipped compressed file. So once that's downloaded, we're going to need to uncompress it and then upload the ISO. So we can't do this if we copy that link. We can't just go into ISO and download from URL because the file extension yeah, it won't work. Even if we change that to, to gzip it won't work. So we need to grab it first. And then once we've grabbed it, we'll have to decompress it and then upload it. So we grab the file and we can do extract all. Or in my case, I have 7-zip installed. So I'm just going to go ahead and use 7-zip to extract it. Once it's extracted, uh, you can delete the BZ2 file. And now we need to go into Proxbox and upload that. So if we go into your node, select your storage, you want ISO images and upload. Select the file. Once you've selected the file, go ahead and click upload. Once we've got the ISO downloaded, we can go ahead and create our virtual machine. Go ahead, click create VM. Choose a node that you want to install it on. We only have one node in this case. Enter your VM ID, give it a name. So OpenSense, I'm not going to tick start at boot at this stage. Under OS, um, choose your OpenSense ISO that we've downloaded. We want other for a guest OS type. It's not Linux. Um, you can leave these as default on the system. Under disks, um, we want to make sure that's set to SCSI. We can have right back for the cache. Uh, IO thread, we want that enabled for performance reasons. Discard, I'm using SSD, so I'm going to enable discard. Storage, uh, this depends on how your system's configured. So I have my local ZFS, which is my um, boot pool. My data pool is tank, so I'm going to store my VM on here. 32 gig is fine for today's purposes. Under CPU, so you can select sockets and cores. Um, I'm going to leave the sockets as one. Recommend you use four for production. Um, AES is on, so you might want AES for hardware acceleration and stuff. So we'll go ahead and next that memory. Again, recommended is eight gig. I disable ballooning. Um, 
we want to make sure that our system has got eight gig available to it all the time. Now, I certainly have enough memory to do that in this. The next is to configure networking. So I'm going to set this to no network device and we'll go through the um, network configurations option, network configuration options next. So I'll select no network device and then next, go ahead and confirm. Uh, make sure you don't have start after created ticked. We'll go ahead and finish that. You can see our OpenSense VMs just appeared. The name will change in a second. So there we go, OpenSense. Now comes the networking options. So this is where it gets um, interesting. We have various options available for how we do this. And this completely depends on your use case, your network, and how you're setting it up. Um, so if you go into the OpenSense VM, let me take a look at hardware. Uh, you'll notice I've got no network cards in here. Um, we've got a couple of ways of doing this. We can add to a PCI device and we can physically pass through the network adapters. So if I choose raw device, you can see I've got my um, Ethernet four Ethernet adapters here. So we can just go ahead and add them if that's what if that's the way we wanted to do it. So PCI device, raw. And obviously just select the network adapters if you want to pass them through. Now there is another way to do it. And that's by bridging the adapters. And that's the way that we're going to do it. So in order to create a network bridge, we need to go into the node network. And you'll notice that I have my four network cards listed and my bridge. So we've got the default bridge, which is the same LAN network as Proxmox. And this is going to change depending on how you want it to work. So what we can do is create a bridge for the one. I'm going to put BNBR1, that's fine. Um, EMP 2S0 is EVE0 on this device, and I'm going to use that for my one. So we're creating a bridge, and I'm going to call it EMP 2S0, and I'm going to give it description so I can actually see what it is. Um, you may or may not want to use VLANs on your one. Most of the time you won't. We're not going to do it in this case. Uh, now when it comes up to comes to setting the LAN side, again, this is completely on you and how on you want to configure your system to connect. So we have VMBR zero, which is already part of our system. So I'm going to go ahead and use that for the LAN. Um, if you wanted to add an extra, net, use one of the additional network ports for the LAN, you could do that, but then obviously you'd have to um, plug a device into that. So you do create Linux bridge. Uh, and then the port, so if it was EMP3S0, for example, I could set that to EVE1. LAN. So in my case, um, I don't have something else to plug into the one. So I'm going to remove that VMBR one, which we set up initially for the one. And I'm going to use the VMBR zero, which is our LAN interface for Proxmox. I'm going to use that so I can um, set the DHCP address on OpenSense, uh, on the OpenSense one. So it'll pick up an RFC 1918 address. Um, if you plug directly into a router, again, this is the network inside the most complicated bit. If you do get stuck with it, um, leave any comments or questions down below. I'm happy to address them. Once you've got your network interfaces set up, 
then we can actually go ahead and create our machine. Oh, hang on one second. Apply the configuration. Uh, so now we've added the bridges into the actual node. What we need to do is go into OpenSense. Then we need to add the network device. So you'll notice previously, if we were directly passing the ports through, we would have done PCI device. But because we've created the virtual network bridge, we're going to do network device. And beep and BR0. So this is the LAN side of my Proxmox device. Um, let's set that to vert IO. And that's our WAM. So we set the multi queue to 8. Um, add that. And then I'm going to add my LAN interface, which is two. Again, set the multi queue to eight. Change the type to vert IO. We can go ahead and add that in. So now we've got net zero, which is our one, and net one, which is our LAN. Uh, and we can see from here, we can see the MAC address, which we might need later to help identify them. Um, but for now, we're pretty much good, so we can go ahead and start this machine. We're not importing an existing configuration, so we're just going to let that go. I am going to interrupt this and just manually do this. You can wait out if you want, but yeah, no. Right, so you can see we've got the two network adapters, VTNet0 and VTNet1. Um, now what I did say, we can see one ends in 0F and one ends in C5. So if we look at hardware, you see the ones that end in 0F is our one device. So it ends in C5, is the other one, so that's easy enough for us to assign it. So enter one pool, uh, enter the one interface, it's going to be VT net zero, uh, and then enter the LAN interface, and that's going to be VT net one. So I want to proceed. Okay, so as you can see, our one has now picked up the DHCP address of 10.1.10.0 forward slash 24, so we're on 107. Uh, and our LAN is on 192.168.1.1, which is the default. Uh, now remember, we're still on the live installer here, so we need to have to go ahead and install it. So we'll log in as installer. Go ahead and set your key map. Now you can choose whether you want to install it with uh, UFS or ZFS. I generally go with ZFS these days, um, unless you're installing on a flash card or something, there's not really much point in UFS. So we'll go ahead and do that. I'm going to stripe it because I only have one hard drive. Yes, we know we're going to erase the contents. Go ahead, set your root password. Now we can complete the installation and reboot. So I'm going into hardware here. I'm going to CD DVD. I just want to eject this. So now we're good. We're on 192.1.1 and our one is 10.1.10.107. Let's try and log into that. And we're good. So we've got the um, web interface up. So because I've got two network cards in my machine, um, I'm able to plug directly in. So we'll log in. Let's go ahead and complete the wizard. 
So give it its host name, set the domain that you want. Set the language, set your DNS servers. I'm just going to use Google for this. I'm just going to override. Uh, but untick that so uh, I don't want the DNS server to be overridden by DHCP. So we'll click next to that. Select your time zone. So I'm in uh, London. One interface. Um, the changes I'm going to have to make here are it's obviously set to DHCP. Now I'm going to have to untick block. Uh, private networks um, because I've got a private network assigned to the one address I'm going to go ahead and set the LAN confirm your root password and then reload so we've finished the initial configuration and now we can uh, go and check for updates And we'll go ahead and update those. Okay. Log back in. Oh, we're going to want to install a QEMU plugin as well. So we're going to system, uh, firmware, plugins. QEMU guest agent for OpenSense. So we're going to go ahead and install that. Let's go ahead and reboot. In fact, I'm just going to shut this down. Um, once you've installed the QEMU guest agent, we need to enable it. Uh, so it's under options um qmu guest agent so we need to enable this so just enable it to so, uh, vert io then we can go ahead and start the system again You'll notice at the moment it says IPs, guest agent not running. Um, so now we should be good. Yeah, so now we got our IP address so the guest agent is running um, obviously you can confirm that by logging in drop to a shell new service uh, QEMU guest agent status and you can see it is running so with that we'll now be able to um, shut down the machine gracefully and control it properly from Proxbox How you set up on Proxmox with OpenSense. So I'm guessing that you're going to want your virtual machines to be able to um, access the internet by that. So let's go ahead and take a look at how to do that. I've got a uh, FreeBSD machine here. Now if we go into hardware, we can see that the network device is set to um, VMBR0, which is my actual LAN here. Um, take open sense out the question for a minute so my LAN will be on the same subnet as the open sense one so that should get a 10.1 address so let me just see if this powers up yeah so it's got 10.1.10.108 just make sure the networking works on this
Yep, so that's fine. So that's using my LAN. Um, and we need it to use a OpenSense one. So I'm going to power this off a second. And I'm going to edit its hardware. So we're on bridge VMBR zero. Um, we we'll drop that down. We have VMBR two, which is the Eve one LAN, which we set up during the OpenSense when we was setting the VMs up. So basically, we should just need to change it over to that, and then that should work. So I don't want the firewall on. That's okay. Now we should get an IP address from OpenSense. Yeah, so now DHCP offer from 192.168.1.1. We'll be bound to 192.168.1.10. So we have indeed got our um, IP address from OpenSense. Make sure that the uh, network works. Yep, so we can ping Google. Um, try the... Okay, I seem to have a DNS issue. Always have DNS issues. Hmm. That's right. Uh, what have we done wrong? Uh, it's not under that, it's on the services. Unbound. It's enabled. So, oh, I've not enabled query forwarding. Apply that. Yeah, so that's fine. Um, so there we go. I hope that helped if running OpenSense on Proxmox is something that you want to do. Uh, if you did find this video useful, please hit the like button to enable others to find it. Uh, it's just the way the YouTube algorithm works. Uh, sub subscribe to the channel. And also, if you hit that notifications icon, you'll receive notifications of any videos as they are done. And don't forget, you can hire us by heading across to our website and clicking on that hire us button.